SetFit, a new way to do few shot learning. In this video, I'm going to explain when you might want to use it, give you an intuitive understanding of how it works, and then at the end, I'll walk through how to use SetFit in a code notebook. The state of the art way for doing text classification is to bring your text in, use a large language model, something like BERT. That's going to give you some embeddings, which you then put into a classifier or classifier head of a network which will then give you your classification outcome. In this case, probability of churn. This is how it's done. The drawback of this approach is fine tuning, getting that classifier for that neural network often requires lots of labeled data, hundreds, thousands of examples. And this amount of labeled data goes up dramatically when you start thinking about more classes because all of a sudden, you're gonna want plenty of examples for each class to cover that. This is where few shot learning comes into place. Few shot allows you to use just a very few labeled examples per class. It's gonna fine tune different types of sentence transformers for text classification, and it's a very efficient type of way to work. It's not a silver bullet, but if you're in this dilemma of not having a lot of labeled data, you're doing text classification, it's worth checking out. When are you doing text classification with say a sentence transformer, what you can do is use that transformer to get embeddings for your different categories. Now what'll happen is the pre-trained model itself, as you can see on the left, has some idea of what business is versus sport versus politics. But you can see it's a little bit scattered compared to if we could finely tune the sentence transformer so it really understood these classes now you can see these clusters are much tighter and the classification performance is going to improve. So this is why we want to fine tune a sentence transformer. To give you an intuitive sense of how SetFit works, I'm going to start with a churn data set with just eight rows. So not enough to do any fine tuning, but should be enough to give you an idea of what's going on. So let's take these eight rows. And what we want to do is we're going to use something called contrastive learning. This is widely used in NLP, but for someone like me that didn't kind of start data science in NLP, this was a new concept, but I wanna give you the intuitive understanding here in the next few slides. Plenty more on the internet if you wanna start getting into the mathematical details, but let's start with the intuition of this. Our pre-trained sentence em embedding is gonna take two different text examples here, and you can see project them into a two-dimensional representation. In this case, I have two classes that are very different. One is, I love the family plan, someone that's not likely to churn, total ripoff, someone that churned. Now you can see kind of where these are together in the embedding space. Now imagine I bring in a new example, great reception. Now if you think about it, where is great reception more related to? I love family plan, or total ripoff. What we do with contrastive learning is we actually measure the distance between the two, literally the Euclidean distance. And what we would wanna do is have great reception, be very close to I love the family plan because they're in the same category. And, very, and you want the two that are dissimilar very far apart from each other. And that's actually the way the loss functions work when we're using contrastive learning, where they put similar things together, try to spread apart the differences, because this is the type of embedding space you want with your finely tuned model that puts all those things that are likely related to churn together, things that are not related to churn together. Now, to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna help the model along by taking the text that we have, so the labeled example, and we're gonna build some examples of similar similar triplets and tri triplets that are not similar. And the way it works is for each example, we're gonna build two contrasting versions and we're gonna use random sampling to get the text for the second text that we're comparing them to. Of course, text one and text two, when they're similar together, are both things that have no churn. For the second one, you'll see I love family, but on the other hand, too many drop calls was one of those ones that came from the churn category. 
So now hopefully you understand how we're putting these together and why we're putting together this. This was just one example, but what we're going to do when we use setfit is go through all the examples that we have in our data set, build a similar and contrasting one for each one. So that boosts me up to 16 rows. That was just the first iteration. What I'm going to do is do many more iterations because remember I'm pulling that second text too randomly. So this will, if I do 20 iterations, give us a data set of 320 rows. 320 rows, much meatier, much better for that fine tuning process. We'll take that, we'll take that meteor data set. Now we'll use that to fine tune the embeddings. One thing you can do is if you don't have any test or validation data, it's hard to understand then how well your embeddings are doing. So what you can do is actually look at projections of your training data and do look at the number of iterations until you can kind of create some separability there. It's a little bit of a pro trip if you have that. But once we have that model finely tuned, then what we can do is take those new sentence embeddings that are coming out, train that new classification model. That new classification model is going to get better performance. The full paper has lots of details run on many tests, including the raft data set, which is well known for a few shot learning. But this one should just give you an intuitive understanding of why we want to use setfit and when it works the best. You'll see here the blue line represent the setfit performance. And you can see that it gets a pretty good performance on this customer reviews data set with just a small number of labeled examples. Now, as you add more and more labeled examples, of course, using all the labeled data is going to work better. And in many cases, if you have the labeled examples, use that. This is really for a scenario where you don't have that labeled examples and you're hoping that the contrastive learning is going to make up for that. I want to now walk through a quick notebook demonstration of using setfit. I'm going to go through this pretty fast because it's actually pretty simple to use setfit. Um, I've went ahead and put the link for this notebook inside the video as well as it's right at the top of this notebook. We're going to start by just installing the setfit package. It comes with a lot of the utilities that you need right inside there. The next step is we're going to load a data set. I'm going to use the same customer reviews data set that was used um, in the paper, one of the blog posts there. So you'll see we're just loading the sentence transformers that we're going to be the ones that we're going to fine tune, as well as the data set from the Hugging Face Hub. Now this is where the set shot comes in. You'll see here what we're doing is we're going to first, we're selecting eight different examples per class. And that's because we have a labeled data set that has a lot more than this, but I want to just show you if you only had a little bit of labeled data, how that would work. So that's what we're doing there in that trained data set piece. And here you can take a look. Um, I printed out the trained data set so you can get an, a sense of what's in that training data set. Okay, next, we're going to go ahead and load a sentence transformer model from the hub. You'll see setfit already has a command from there. Pretty used to, if you're used to transformers, it's there. Now, the next step is we're going to create the trainer. And here you can see all the different options that are available where we specify the model, the training data set, eValve, the loss. Here we're going to use cosine similarity loss. The number of iterations is another one here. This is one that I shared earlier, like 20 is a good working number, but this is something that you can play with. And this is that multiplier effect of the number of examples that we're going to have. Then I have some kind of column mappings just in case your data set is different. But this sets up kind of that trainer. The next step here I'm going to run is to run the training. And what we're doing at this step is taking that larger set of data that we have. And you can see here, in this case, it's 640 examples and doing the fine tuning process. So this is where, for example, I'm running this on Colab, having a GPU for this fine tuning process comes in handy. So while Setfit gives you lots of data, you still have to go through the fine tuning process that can be compute intensive. Hopefully though, because you're using kind of more data than you might have had labeled with this few shot approach, you might be able to use a smaller model. It gives you faster inference, faster training as well. It's one of the advantages. So here we've trained that. 
there's already um, an evaluator in here that we can use and you can see I was able to see that I was able to get an 86% accuracy on this. Remember, right? That's just eight examples for two classes, but even with just that little bit of data, I was able to get kind of a workable model. And that's the really impressive part about the few shot learning and why I think it's worth it to give it a shot if you're in the scenario where you don't have much data. The last part of the notebook now just does, takes this model that we've created, logs into the Hugging Face Hub. I'm not gonna walk through that, but what we wanna do is push that model to the Hugging Face Hub. Once we have that there, we can always grab it later at any time, download that model, use it for inference. The other thing the Hugging Face Hub gives you is something that's called inference endpoint. So if you want to set up a production way to use your text classification model, so it's always on, always ready to go, dedicated to you, this is where we have something called Hugging Face Inference Endpoints. And what I did is for those of you that are interested, Philip has a blog post. I sh I'll need to, I should add the link to the blog post here, has a blog post on how to do this as well as an example endpoint so you can get a sense of how you would productionalize this. I'll do, talk about that in another video, but for this one, this is just a quick overview of how you can walk through and use SetFit, a little bit of code, go try it out.